How does that even make sense? I didn't sleep, I didn't. I was just like the Are entire time. Okay? What? Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. Why are you even asking if I'm okay? Did you not hear that they were giving people iPhones and iPads as souvenirs at Yusuf's wedding? Seriously, is why you really fighting corruption when doctors have not been paid? Also, do you guys know that being a leader is not about age? Ah, my father and my god. Except the fact that African leaders don't want young people in politics. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Olu of Wari is 37 years old. Your Royal Highness, you know how to do well. Also, Ghana is building 111 hospitals. Father Lord Almighty, very soon they will become the giant. Ethiopia is building its own social media platforms. My people, is that a good thing or not? Those are the stories that we'll be discussing today. Do not forget that the timestamp to skip to the story that you like is down in the description below. Also, please subscribe to our channel. We are begging you. <laughs> and if you enjoyed this episode, share it on Facebook and on Twitter. Kairo, roll the camera. your girl Adiola. What a weekend, my people. I don't even know where to start. How many private jets landed in Kano? You don't even know. Okay. Sahara said about 100 jets. I said about, that's like maybe too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Because BBC said about 50. You get what I'm saying? But give or take, there must have been at least 30 private jets that landed in Kano over the weekend. For Buari's son's wedding. Abba. Uh -uh. And then they will tell us that there is no money in Nigeria. The devil is a liar. I don't even know why we take loans from all these foreign bodies. When we have all these uh, wealthy people in the country, I mean, these people can just fori kori, you know what I mean? Put their heads together and to come up with how to make the country a better country. But ah, no, 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 no. They were busy giving out customized iPhone 12 Pro. iPhone, iPhone 12. The latest iPhone. Ah, for iPhone in town, how much is it? $1,000. Before you customize it, you know, as well as iPad 7th gen, how much is that one? About $500. Okay. Once again, that's before you customize the iPad as well. And now those are just two items among other items in one box that they are giving out to people. $1,500 right now is about 600000 Naira at the bank in Nigeria. If you go to the black market, it is about 750000 Naira as gift for one person. Did you see the crowd at that wedding? It's insane. <laughs> I know I'm being economical, but seriously, give or take, there has to be at least 200 people at that wedding. And it wasn't even a one-day event. Even the president could hardly make it inside the hall. Wow, look at the president being pushed back and forth. Now, my people, just multiply 700,000 naira per person times 200 people. You see, $1,500 per person. That has to be about $300,000 just on the iPhone and the iPad alone without talking about other items in the box for giveaway or the food that they served at all the events or other expenses that comes with this wedding. The next time that any country or anybody or any organization wants to lend money to Nigeria, they should do this calculation. This is a country where doctors are not well paid and they are not paid on time. They keep going on strike. Doctors are still on strike. No, be so. Teachers are not well paid. Some of these teachers have not been paid for months. How can the president be so insensitive? I don't get it. And he's the first to talk about fighting corruption. Oh, Gabuari, so this is what you are doing with our money. Ah! Just like we will still tackle Buari. He has been a bad boy. Yes. 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 He has been a bad boy. Yes. He has been a bad boy. Ben, leave me. Why are you trying to? Ah, I must say, you see, Mioje, is he doing the right thing? Is it the time to be sharing iPad and iPhone when uh, people are hungry? When will EFCC investigate the source of the money for these iPads? Mm, that is what we are waiting for. And the irony is, these people that they were giving the iPad and the iPhones to, they don't even need it. Don't you guys see the caliber of people that were at that wedding? First ladies from different countries, people with private jets, people that are wealthy. They were the people at the wedding. I'm sure that they all have iPhones or better phones or whatever, or the latest Samsung. They don't even need it. They don't need all these things. So much for fighting corruption. Ah, we have suffered. Oh, by the way, because of this wedding, we Nigerians, we, we got to see our first lady once again after a very long time. <laughs> 
ah, my mother, it's been a long time. You know, where have you been? Mother, my shabwari, where have you been? Agbokwe, wala, beabu. Translate that. We heard that you were under protection, you know. Esma, can you please go back to the first lady that you used to be at the beginning? Because you used to keep it real with the president. At that time, you and your daughter, Zara, you were talking at that time. What happened to you? I beg, let's move on because my blood is starting to boil, you know. Nothing for me. One for me, me. Do we have anything positive? Something good? Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, my father. You know, I do well. Ladies and gentlemen, ah, fresh of breath here. That same weekend where they were sharing iPad, while they were sharing iPad and iPhone, was the same weekend for the coronation of the new Olu of Wari Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet my father, Uche Yurise Shola Emiko. He's also known as Prince Shola Emiko. He became the Ogiame Atuwate the third. Ogiame Suo, long live the king. Guys, this is so inspiring. In fact, I don't want to cry because a lot of young Nigerians are now saying, wow, so a 37 year old can be crowned king in an oil rich Niger Delta region. So why is it that young people are not encouraged or allowed into the realms of politics in Nigeria? People are getting inspired to get into politics after seeing the story of this. My father, his royal highness, got his first degree in international studies and political science from Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. And he got his master's in management from Case Western Reserve University, also in Ohio, before moving back to Nigeria in 2008. And then he worked as a national Petroleum Investment Management Services and Sahara Energy, as well as Shell Nigeria and so on and so forth. You guys know that Niger Delta is a state of oil. It's an oil-rich state. He went into private business and established Noble Energy Limited, as well as Coral Curators Limited. His wife is the daughter of the late billionaire Ida Hosa, who passed away recently, actually. So congratulations to the couple once again. All the young people in Nigeria are just really inspired by you guys. I just wish that we have more young people in the realms of affairs when it comes to politics in Nigeria. So, the king has been described as a God-fearing king. I mean, he talked about God during the coronation. He had a cross at the top of his crown. And you know, that got the attention of so many people. But we are hoping that you will actually be for real, for real. That you will actually be along. Your royal highness, Eda Kuntori along. We are watching you on Plasma TV. Because you know, we have a pastor as a vice president. Do I get an amen from somebody? Because these things are not just about what we say or what we wear. It is more about what we do. Amen, amen. Congratulations to you and your wife and your entire family and to the people of Wari, the Shakiri people of Wari, we're so happy for you guys. Next time, please invite your girl. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. While the president's son was getting married over the weekend and they were sharing iPad and iPod and all of that, thanks to the person that called our attention to what's happening in just Ladies and gentlemen, there has been a crisis going on for a long time now. And they keep saying hoodlums, hoodlums are killing people. To be honest with you, we're not really clear about what's happening. All we know is there has been a series of killings going on in Plateau State. There were reports that herdsmen killed about 45 people. And then there has been several reports of hoodlums killing people. Not only that, some travelers, about 23 of them, all Muslims, were killed as well. 22 people have been killed in an armed attack in the nation's plateau state. 14 others were injured when a convoy of five buses ferrying Muslim followers was ambushed along Rukuba Road in Joss. If you are living in Joss and you are watching this, please put something in the comment section so we have a better understanding of what is actually happening in Joss. And now, students are also being killed, including their staff members as well. One of the students, a 100 level student, was actually going to campus and he just got on Okada. It's like somebody getting an Uber and the driver of the Okada got to a particular place Place in broad daylight at 2 in the afternoon, he dragged him down and he stabbed him to death. At least four students have been killed which is so unfortunate. And so, of course, all the students have been really, really afraid. And then, on top of all the crisis happening, the school decided to shut down because of security reasons. And they gave the students a notice to vacate the premises of the campus. And so, a lot of the students have been stranded because they don't even know who to trust. It's not like they can just go to the bus station and take a bus to go home. Like I gave you the example of the Okada man that stabbed the student in broad daylight. So, they don't even know who to trust. So, a lot of students have been stranded. Now, some governors are sending buses to evacuate students from their own state. The governor of Enugu sent some buses. Also, the governor of Kogi State, Yaya 
sent some buses to evacuate Kogi students. Huge shout out to these governors that have evacuated students from their states. But I just wonder why the federal government did not send soldiers to go there and protect these students. It's just so heartbreaking that the federal government is not doing anything. I don't know how many states have evacuated their students, but I do know that Kogi and Enugu state have evacuated their students. Also, this is not just happening at University of Jos. This is happening at so many schools in Plato State. But we are talking about this so that hopefully the federal government will please take it seriously and do something. For those who have lost their loved ones, we're really sorry about this. May their souls rest in peace and hopefully the government will not fail the students. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Moving on to Ethiopia, ladies and gentlemen, please, I just need your opinion about this one because guess what? Amidst the ongoing civil war, the government of Ethiopia is working on building their own social media platforms. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm trying to process this because I'm actually happy that Ethiopia is coming up with their own platforms. At the same time, though, I have a lot of questions. First of all, why is the government the one building social media platforms? Because normally that's what people do like just the regular citizens should be the ones doing this i don't know i just i don't know how i feel about the government building the platform second of all the director general of information network security agency shumete giza said that this will now replace facebook whatsapp and twitter ethiopia says it plans to develop its own social media platforms after accusing global companies like facebook of acting against the interests of the country ethiopia was developing platforms that can substitute the messaging uh, pro uh, program whatsapp and a video conferencing platform, Zoom. Okay, like I said, I'm happy for this. I think it's innovative. The more the merrier, we should have a lot of platforms. But seeing that they now want to get rid of other platforms that people all over the world have access to is becoming interesting. They said that Facebook deleted the accounts and the posts of some people who were disseminating the true reality of Ethiopia. I don't have a problem with them coming up with their own, but if it would be controlled and censored by the government, I cannot trust it. Especially because they are citing the example of China using WeChat. But China uses WeChat because they completely control the narrative of their people. They control social media in China. It's not a good thing. So is the Ethiopian government also trying to control the people's narratives? Like, seriously? I, like, I don't know. I don't get it. As Especially when a war is going on. Really? How is that even a priority? When a war is going on, they are building social media platforms. Now, this China that they are talking about, their censorship is second to none in China. And they refuse to allow certain opinions that are different from that of the government because it goes against the ruling party's opinion. And that was exactly what Lai Mohamed was trying to do in Nigeria before we kicked against it. Sir, if you go to China, sir, we were together in China, sir, we could not get Google Facebook or Instagram. You can't even use your, your, your email. See, even he knows that it's censored, yet he's trying to duplicate that in Nigeria. The devil is a liar. Or Instagram. It is Instagram, not Instagram. Did I not correct the man the other time? Maybe he doesn't watch my show. Or Instagram. I said it is Instagram. Why do you keep playing it? You want trouble today. Oh. This is not funny. We're talking about something serious. Anyway, I believe that people should be allowed to tell their own stories, even if it is different from that of the government, without being censored by any government. I think individuals should be allowed to tell their experience. Let me know what you guys think about this. On one side, I think it's a great thing that they are trying to build their own platform. I think if it's like individuals that are building this, it would be a great innovation. I will be so for it. I'll be the first to download it even. At the same time, I don't think that they need to delete the other social media platforms that are already in existence. So let me know what you guys think about this. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Ghana, ladies and gentlemen, and I know we've been talking about Ghana a lot lately. I'm sorry, those that we have not talked about your countries. I am so sorry. We'll talk about your country next time. But guys, we just have to, we have to talk about this. So in the last episode, we showed you guys a video of a Ghanaian hospital with mothers and their newborns on the floor. And I remember asking in the video that, please let me know if the condition or the status of that hospital has changed. And I want to thank Ghanaians because they came through. They let me know that the status has changed. The condition has changed. They called my attention to the fact that that video was from 2017 but not only that they said right now the government of ghana is actually working on building 111 hospitals known as agenda 111 i said my father and my god i'm so touched this includes 101 district hospitals two psychiatric hospitals seven regional hospitals and the redevelopment of the accra psychiatric hospital the project has already been commissioned it has commenced we discovered that there were 101 districts in the country 
with no district hospitals. And we have to do something about it. And do you know how much they want to spend? So they're saying that each hospital would cost $17 million. I was like, wow. First of all, I was, you know, surprised that the cathedral would cost $200 million. Sorry that I keep going back to the cathedral, but $200 million for the cathedral, but the hospital is $17 million. I'm like, oh, wow. They need to go and beg whoever is building the hospital to build the cathedral for them. I think they can save a lot of money on the cathedral. But they're spending $17 million on each of the regional hospitals, and they're trying to build 101 regional hospitals. And it's expected to be completed completed within a year and a half. I really hope that they finish this in the next one and a half years. But you know the best part is the district hospitals have been designed by the architectural firm of my father, David Ajaye. I've talked about him on this show several times. He was even featured in my TED talk. But that's just how much I love the man. I, I like to claim him that he's actually Nigerian, but Ghanaians think that he's their son. Anyway, we will not go there today. I mean, just look at his last name. Ajaye is a Yoruba name. I'm, forget about the spelling. I'm not even going to argue with anybody. Take it or leave it. He's our son. Anyway, so the man is the one designing the district hospitals. And what you guys are saying is actually like the 3D, the animated design of what these hospitals would look like. So Ghana is trying to build more than 100 of what you guys are saying. I'm like, wow, wow. I think, do you know that by the time that this is done, that Ghana will now become a medical hub in West Africa? Or let me say in Africa in general because I don't know. So instead of people flying to India or the US, for example, if it is something that they can take care of in Ghana, don't you think people would rather go to Ghana? The flight ticket is cheaper. And if you're living in West Africa and you're part of ECOWAS, you don't need a visa to go to Ghana. You see where I'm going. Do you see what I see? Because what I'm saying is starting to become a seesaw. Ghana is gradually becoming what? The Giante? I'm not going to say the rest. Please, before you send me an email, we're not comparing countries. I'm not putting down any country for Ghana. No, I'm just saying that hopefully what they are doing will challenge some people in Africa. For example, I remember showing you guys their airport when I was in Ghana. You guys remember that? So, when we got to the airport, I was like, oh, oh my god, like, this is Kenyan airport, like, what are we doing? Like, I was, I was like, oh my goodness, this is so pretty. And of course, the first thing I did was to check out the restrooms. <laughs> You see, you see why I tell you that they are doing some things that will very soon catapult them. Okay, <laughs> all I'm just saying is this 111 hospitals, let it be a wake up call. Hopefully they will challenge other African countries. And I'm not just talking about Nigeria because I'm from Nigeria, but other African countries, there's nothing wrong in having hundreds and hundreds, in fact, thousands of hospitals to cater for the people of each country. Hopefully they complete this project on time. When they do that, we'll definitely be back to show you guys the video and the pictures of the hospitals. You guys know I don't know much, guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So before I leave today, I'd like to give a shout out, but keep in mind that this particular shout out is actually an ad. So I'd like to give this shout out to an Nigerian nurse in Maryland, USA for starting not just a YouTube channel, but one that provides vital medical information to parents about themselves and about their kids. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet the beautiful YouTuber, my mother in the Lord, Undi Freke Daniel, a family nurse practitioner who makes videos about common childhood and adult illnesses. She gives tips on how to live a healthy life and the things that parents need in order to be aware regarding their children's health so that they can be more informed and empowered whenever they go to the hospital for doctor's appointment and so on. She's not a medical doctor, but she said that her show is given information as a guide to help you walk into a child's health appointment or even your own appointment with more knowledge so that you can ask the right questions. So she has videos on her YouTube channel about topics like obesity in children, how to identify a child going through sexual abuse and other abuses as well. Just to name a few of the videos that she has on her channel. I think my favorite is her talking about self-care. That's something I always need to remember. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm always going, going, going. I've already subscribed to her channel. I'm putting the link in the description below. Please subscribe to her channel. You get nothing but good information that can be handy anytime and any day. So like I said, she contacted me to tell you guys about her channel. And by the way, Auntie Nos, now that we've talked about your channel, you need to put up more videos. I beg. We are begging you because we are watching you on Plasma TV. <laughs> you need to put up more videos. We're super proud of you and what you're doing. Thank you so much. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> So before I leave, do not forget to contact helpmewaka.com for all your errands in Nigeria and Ghana. Yes, now they are operating in Nigeria and Ghana. And this one that everybody is moving their headquarters to Ghana. I'm hoping that Help Me Waka 
We now move to Ghana as well, but they're already operating in Ghana. So my Ghanaian people, Charlie, whatever you need to do at home in Ghana, maybe you are based in the America, you are based in the UK, you are based in the abroad, anywhere you are based, please contact helpmeworker.com to help you run all your errands in and around Ghana, all over Ghana. They will do anything. They will deliver groceries. They will help you look at the land you are trying to buy. They will help you inspect whatever project you're working on. They will help you to get your transcript. They will help you to get your West verification and so on and so forth. Do not forget to go on their website, helpmeworker.com, and that's where you can order any of their services. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping you right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, hey, Charlie, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I will see you later.